If you want to skyrocket your construction career as fast as possible, I applaud your drive. As someone who was able to get promoted to a project manager in my 20s at a multi-billion dollar construction company, I too ran down that same path. So today I want to share everything that I have learned so that you can do the same or even better than I did. And what I'm going to advise in this video is not an easy path, but just keep in mind if you want an extraordinary result, you need to put in an extraordinary amount of effort. So if that sounds good to you, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell below so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. So now let's get into it. So the first thing, and this is probably the most important thing, is that if you are really trying to progress your career, get promoted, all that kind of stuff, you need to have support from your management. More specifically, your immediate boss, but also management in general. And especially if you're working for a corporate company. Not sure if everyone knows this, but basically your manager is kind of everything when it comes to promotions. The higher ups count on the managers to tell them who's ready for the next role. So that person actually has a quite a bit of power to help forge your career path. So it's your job as the individual to make sure that you have a great relationship with that manager. And sometimes if you're at a company with a good culture, you can have relationships with those people that are at those higher levels as well. And if you have support at all of those levels, at least you'll be seen and you'll get noticed so that when promotions come up, your name is in that pot. And that's why you can work your butt off, you can be competent, you can be all those things, but if your manager doesn't think you're worth anything and the people above don't even know who you are, it's going to be just so hard to progress. It's probably a little bit easier at a smaller company when there's less people, but especially if you're working at a large company, you need to be able to be seen. So that's why this is the number one tip because ultimately, I've seen people that don't necessarily have the competency skills, but they have the reach, they have the relationships, they have all those things where they're seen in that light and that's why their name is in the pot and that's why they get the opportunities. So you can technically still underperform, but because you're seen in good graces by your immediate boss, by whoever, you're playing that game right, you can get promoted that way. I do not suggest that this is the way I'm just letting you know that that's how you can tell that this is such a high leverage move for yourself. I think it's very important that you actually have the skills to be able to do the job and you can't just talk your way up the ladder. It's going to catch up with you one day and that rolls into the next tip. You need to work. You need to put in time, especially in construction. If you want to get promoted fast, but you also want to be seen as competent as a manager or at a higher level, you have to put in the hours. And these are like, good hours, not hours just hanging out at work and talking with people and just being there. You have to be putting in hours, learning and growing every single day. And if you want a number for this, I would say if you're trying to get promoted and you want to be a great manager in five years, I don't see how you can do that without working 60 hour weeks for those five years. And if you don't want that, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that something's got to give. If you want to be both the great manager and you wanna do it quickly, that's the only way that I see. If you wanna do it quickly, but you don't necessarily care about how great you are, sure. You don't have to work those amount of hours, but in order for you to get that experience that's necessary for you to be that manager, and we'll talk a little bit more about some specifics in that later, you have to put in the time. There are so many different aspects of the construction industry that you may not see on every single job, and that's why it just takes that time. It's nothing that you can necessarily just learn in a book you have to experience it to truly understand this industry. So like in my example, it took me about seven years to get to that level. And that was me working, you know, almost those 60 hour weeks. Sometimes you're working seven days a week. It's just part of it. And that's just what I wanted. I loved it. I wanted to grind it out. I wanted to keep learning so that each job that I went to, I was gaining either more skills or improving on the skills that I already had. And I came into the industry with zero construction experience. So again, that's the debt that you have to pay down in order for you to get to that good point in your career career where you can actually manage people. And while you're on that journey trying to learn and do all those things, I highly suggest that you do not draw lines in your responsibilities. You have to do your best to expose yourself to all aspects of that construction industry. So I'm going to use buildings as an example. If you're the concrete and structure engineer, you can't just live in that bubble if you're trying to move up quickly. Because if after five years, all you've done is structure, you are nowhere near ready to run a full job by yourself. A construction project is much more than just the structure. You have mechanical equipment, you have electrical things, you have finishes, you have your envelope, you have your roof. All of these different aspects, you have to have some inkling of 
how to handle a bunch of these issues. So if you're trying to move up quickly, you cannot draw lines in the sand in your career and say this is only my scope because you're going to limit the amount that you can learn. If you're trying to learn everything that you can to get promoted quickly, you have to be able to expand yourself. So if work is offered, take it. You have to absorb it. And again, this kind of ties into this whole working thing. If you're doing stuff outside of the scopes that are provided to you, you're going to have to spend more time doing it. And if you want your managers to see you in a good light, you can't just take on all this work and not perform. So you can kind of see how all of these little things tie into each other. If you want to move up quickly, you have to have this big breadth of knowledge. To get that big breadth of knowledge, you need to be able to expose yourself to it. But it's not normal in jobs to be in charge of everything. So you're always going to be given a small portion of it. But if you want to learn everything, you're gonna to have to spend more time at work. But you have to understand how the building comes together. All the little nuances of the different scopes. Like how long does it actually take to place concrete? How long does an electrician take to rough in interiors? What is the level of quality that's required when it comes to a roof? You should be able to speak intelligently about these things if you're trying to become a manager in this amount of time. And that rolls into the next tip about jumping in and solving problems. Solving problems is probably the fastest way that you can get some experience. If some fire, not actual fire, but like if there's something happening in the field that's an issue, you want to be the one that helps solve the problem. If you run away from your problems, you never truly understand how things get really done. And I know a lot of people in the industry that run away from their problems or they delegate their problems down or up or what have you because they just don't want to deal with the stress. If you can't deal with the stress, you can't manage people. You can't manage a job. Construction is not going to be this like rosy field of just like everything goes great. Like everything can possibly go wrong in construction. Every job you see something new that you're like, I would have never thought that that would be a problem. So if you don't like solving problems, I'm sorry, you're not gonna be equipped to deal with things if you're trying to get promoted quickly, if you're trying to accelerate your career. So any problem that comes up, be a part of the solution, find out what happened, how to solve it, and take it to completion. So that's the technical side of things, right? You're starting your career, you're trying to learn, you're trying to look at all of these different things, and you're just trying to gain that technical knowledge. What does it actually look like to install a roof or to rough in? or to roll out PT cables. Like what do all of these different things look like? And once you get all of that down, you're spending time in the field, you're getting the hang of all these different trades and how they come together. The next thing you have to do is work on your people skills. And this is coming from experience. And even to this day, I think I need to do a little bit better in this aspect. But when you become a manager, yes, as a manager, you need to have the technical backing so that you can help people and teach people below you how to do the work. What almost becomes more important is how do you inspire people to do the work? How do you deal with all the different personalities that you have on site? How do you deal with the owner, the architect? There's all of these different types of people that you are now in charge of, for lack of a better phrase. If you don't know how to manage people, if you don't know how to talk to people, if you don't know how to make people like, like you sort of, I mean, you're, you're not gonna be a very good manager because ultimately as a manager, you can't do everything yourself. You are counting on people to do things from all aspects, not just your own team, but on the design side, but on the owner side. So if you don't have the skills to bring people together, you're going to struggle. So it's those soft skills, just keep that in mind that you're gonna to have to work on as well in addition to the technical skills that we were building earlier. So you're learning how to build, you're learning the people skills, and now you have to have some skills of actual project management because you wanna be able to do the job before you get the job. I know there's some people that are like, I if I'm doing the job, they should pay me for the job. Like, I don't know. Like, I, again, that's just not my style. I would want to have that feeling of, hey, I'm, I've already done this before. So when I get the role, when I and then that role comes with expectations, like I'm, I'm ready. I don't want to be the person that's promoted without having ever done anything that's required in the role. I don't know. People are going to look at you and say, hey, you're the project manager. I mean, you should know how to do your own forecast. You're the project manager. You should know how to write your own subcontracts. And I just would never want anyone to be in that situation where you actually don't have the skills to do any of that. So again, if you're trying to get going early, you're going to also have to juggle those extra project management skills. So what are those skills? One of the big ones is just understanding the financial side of the business. So what does that mean? It means, do you know how to manage the cost of a project 
And do you know how to forecast your future costs? So you're gonna have to know how to crunch some numbers. And it's one thing to manage a budget, but in order for you to forecast, that's equally as important as well because you need to know where the job is going. And this all ties back to that experience that you have gained on the front end. Because how can you know where your rebar guy is gonna end up at the end of the job if you have never seen anything happen in the field of how that gets done? How are you going to know that the glass guy is on track to finish on time if you have never seen that install happen? Or if you've never dealt with it, never seen what that duration actually plays out to be? Ultimately, construction is a business. Now, most of us don't do this as a nonprofit. So as a manager, it is your job to make sure that the job is making money and that you are protecting the financial interests of the company. And that is something that you'll ultimately be held to at the end of the day. The other side of project management, the contract and the risk side of the business. So in your contract, you have to know what your deal is. The contract is the rule of the game. If you don't understand your contract, you're not gonna know what all your parameters are, when you have to give your notices by, what your liquidated damages or your costs are essentially if you're late on the job, how much profit can you charge on changes. All of those things are explicitly stated in the contract and you need to know that and communicate that to your team. The other part of the contract is your schedule and schedule is so big these days, right? With all these lawsuits, litigations, delays, you have to have a good handle on your schedule. But in order for you to have a good handle on your schedule, like what does that mean? That means that you have to be able to analyze your schedule and understand if you're on time or not, if it's sequenced properly or not. And some people will say, like maybe that's the superintendent's job or what, but as a project manager, you're ultimately responsible for everything on the job. So if you don't know how to read a schedule and you don't know how a schedule works or how the strategy behind a schedule, how to manage it, how to update it, and what the proper sequence looks like, you're dead in the water. And that's why durations, sequence, all those things, I'm telling you, you can only learn from experience because then you can look at the drawings, you can look at the details and understand, wow, this is gonna take, you know, two weeks longer than it normally would. Or maybe we can resequence this work so that we can actually gain this time because we know on the back end we're gonna spend more time. You can't have those strategic discussions as a manager if you have no idea what you're looking at. And then managing the risk, you have to be writing your subcontract. And basically you're subcontracting out the work so that you can't perform it yourself. You're delegating out that risk to somebody else. However, in doing that, you have to understand everything that you're signing that person up for. What services are you buying from those individuals? And how explicit are you being and protecting your company to make sure that they are performing everything they need to for your project? And managing risks all comes down to being able to handle the problems, being able to identify those big ticket items and having plans to mitigate that risk. And again, just think about it. How are you gonna mitigate risk if you've never dealt with it before? How are you going to be able to see that train coming down if you've never heard or seen a train before in your life. And the last thing that I want for anybody watching is for you to, you know, climb to the top, get the money, get the title, and just get cut from underneath because you weren't ready for the job. So I hope this video gave you an idea of the path that it would take for you to truly jumpstart and accelerate your career in construction. And again, it's not only about how fast you can get there, but how ready you are to truly lead people and a project. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about, please comment below. I really want to know your thoughts and where you're at in your own careers. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. I wish you all the best and I'll see you on the next video.